Hello, my name's Kay James. I'm a cataloger and a former member of the RDA Steering Committee. This video is about navigating in the new RDA toolkit. Just FYI, this video does not cover searching using this search box over here. Using the search box is obviously a very efficient way to get dir uh, directly at the page you want to see, but there's a separate video about that. It's available on the YouTube channel. It's called Searching. And there's also some short videos available on the different search types that you see listed here. So please check those out uh, in addition to watching this video. This video is going to focus on navigating in the toolkit using the drop down menus, um, getting to content from bookmarks and notes, and some of the different uh, types of links that you will see when you're looking at different pages in the toolkit. So let's get started. I need to be logged in in order to see the content. I know I'm logged in because it says, welcome back, Kate. As you can see here, there is a, a list of pages that I've recently viewed. If you haven't logged in before, there won't be anything here. But once you start using the new toolkit, you'll find that this is a very efficient way of getting back to a page you've looked at recently. For example, let's say you were looking at the work entity page. You went to lunch, you came back, of course, you've your session has been timed out, so you need to log back in. Then you can just click here and go back to the last page you were looking at before you went to lunch. The drop down menus are an efficient way to get to a section in the toolkit, provided that the section is listed in the menu. So, as you can see, these are the RDA entities. If I were to click on one of these, it would take me to the entity page. These are the guidance sections. Watch what happens when I scroll down. Notice how sometimes a second drop down menu opens up. For the large sections and guidance, there'll be a secondary drop down menu that opens up, and you can just click on that to get directly into the section that you want to see. Policies, I'm not going to say much about today because there are not any real policy statements yet in the new toolkit. In the future, it will be very efficient for you to navigate between RDA instructions and policy statements because there'll be links that you can click on to take you back and forth, but right now there's not much to see there. Resources also has some large sections that have um, secondary drop-down menus that open up, as you can see here. So you can get to those sections if you want. Now I'm going to open up the work entity page and show you a few features that are available there. Here we are. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom because at this point you're probably wondering where are all the RDA elements? How do I get to those without using the search box? It's not um, efficient to have a drop down menu for all the RDA elements because there are so many of them. But they are listed for each of the entities that they belong to. So this is a list of all the work elements. As you can see, you have to scroll down in order to be able to see them. It's a very long list, and so scrolling to look for the particular element you want might not be very efficient, uh, unless you really don't have any idea, so you just want to keep scrolling until it rings a bell. But let's say I think I remember what I want to see. Um, I know that there's a work element that is some kind of a date element, starts with the word date. I can use this box to do a type ahead search. This is available on all the entity pages. So watch what happens when I type the letter D. Oh, sorry, I need to click on the box first in order for it to show up. Okay, so I type the letter D. As you can see, it automatically um, starts filtering for all of the elements that start with D. And now I type in an A. And all of a sudden, I have a very manageable list of three elements. I think that date of work is the element I was interested in. At this point, I can either just click on it and it'll open up the date of work page, or I can use the preview icon to open up the definition for date of work and decide if it's what I really want to see. So if I just click on this, the definition opens up in the preview pane here. At this point, I might read the definition and say, mm, no, this isn't what I wanted to see and close the box. Or I might say, yes, I definitely want to take a look at this element page. So I'll click here 
and notice that now the date of work page opens up. This is a breadcrumbs trail that appears uh, on top of the element label. This tells me where I am intellectually in RDA. So I know that date of work is a work element and work is an entity. So this helps me know where I am. If I wanted to go to the work entity page, I could just click here and that would take me back there. But I don't wanna do that right now. Notice this element reference box here. Depending on how you have set up your views, this might be automatically open or you might have to open it by clicking once. As you can see, there are several different types of um, links in here and there's these plus signs. So these are mappings to Dublin Core and the Mark 21 bibliographic format. If I wanna see what the mapping is, I just click on the plus sign to expand it and click on the minus sign to close it. Obviously the Dublin Core mapping is very brief, so it's not a big difference there, but let's see what happens with the Mark 21 mapping. This is a very long list of um, fields that it would map to in Mark 21. If I don't wanna read through this right now, I can just easily close it up by clicking on the minus sign. Now I can see the other things in the element reference page. There are links to the domain and range entities for this element. These work just like the links uh, I showed you from the work entity page. If I click here, it will take me to the work entity page. If I click here, it will open up the definition for work in the preview pane. Notice how this link doesn't have the preview icon. That's because this links to an external website. It links to the RDA registry. Now, if I just click on it, it's going to replace the toolkit page with the registry page, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to right click and I'll open it up in a new tab. Depending on what browser you're using, this is going to look a little bit different, but this should uh, work for any browser in a similar fashion. Now I can look at what it says about date of work in the RDA registry page. So here's the information. If you're not familiar with the RDA registry, uh, this is where a lot of the content that's in the toolkit comes from. So it's official, it's you know RSC, ALA publications endorsed website, but it's not the same as the toolkit. All right, let me scroll a bit further down, show you what's at the bottom of the page. So there's links to other elements that are related to date of work, and I could navigate to those using these links. Then there's these. Um, these are like forward and back buttons. Um, so there's no uh, obvious relationship between date of representative expression and declination and date of work, other than the fact that there are all work elements and they um, date of work falls between these two elements alphabetically. So this is just like if you wanted to look at the elements in a linear fashion, um, you could click on these buttons. As you can see, this goes back to a date of representative expression. And if I want to get back to date of work, I can go down here, click on it. Now I'm back. Obviously, this is not the most efficient way to navigate uh, between different elements in the toolkit. So I would imagine that unless uh, you're just new to the toolkit and you want to check some things out and just you know find out more about work entity elements, uh, you wouldn't use this. Or you know perhaps if you just happen to need to look at an element that is alphabetically next to the one you're looking at now, it could be useful. But you probably won't use this very much in your day-to-day -day cataloging work. Notice this over here. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. When I'm in the blue area, there's a, a little white square so I can see it better. And then if I scroll back up a little bit, uh, I can still see this blue arrow. This is a way to quickly get back up to the top of the page. Obviously, I can keep you know scrolling up and down over here, but I can save myself a little bit of time by just clicking on this and I get back up to the top of the page. 
Now I want to show you a different element page because there are some features that are not available on the date of work page. So we're going to look at carrier type. Okay, so if you're familiar with carrier type from the original toolkit, you know that carrier type has an RDA vocabulary encoding scheme available for it, which means there's a list of RDA terms that you can record as the value for the carrier type elements. Um, you know, for example, there's volume and audio disc, video disc. Here's that list of terms. Now, let's say I need to record a carrier type for some kind of an audio format, but I'm not sure which one. Um, the term definitions, you can get to them by going back up to the top and searching and getting it to the glossary, or you can just click on the term. Notice this little orange dotted line here. So if I click on audio roll, here's the definition. It's the same definition that's in the glossary and it just pops up here. So I can then read this and decide if, you know, this is the term that I need to use. When I'm done reading it, just click somewhere else to close it. And let's say I'm like, no, that wasn't it. I can click on audio belt, check that one out. So that's a nice way um, to figure out what term you need to use without having to navigate away from the element page. So these pop-up definitions are also available in the glossary in some places. Uh, so I wanna show you how that works in the glossary. Okay, so here's the glossary. Um, let's take a look at the A page. So notice the orange line that appears here. So this is the uh, abbreviated title element and it has the inverse element abbreviated title of. If I wanna see the definition of abbreviated title of, um, I can just click on it and it pops up. In this case, uh, the inverse element is directly located underneath abbreviated title. So it's not a big deal for me to just, you know, move my eyes down a little bit and read it there. But, you know, if it was uh, something that started with a different letter of the alphabet, it, this is an, an efficient way to just, you know, pop, open up this pop-up definition and read it without navigating away from the A page. Now notice here, when I, I'm moving my cursor over abbreviated title, um, it's underlined. That means it will um, take me to the element title page if I click on this link. So as you can see, um, there are hyperlinks for some of them, not for others. So if it's a C reference, it's not going to be available. And it's also not going to be available if it's just a um, RDA vocabulary term, like if I scroll all the way down to audio, we can look at audio belt that we were looking at before. And yes, there's a lot of terms in the RDA glossary that start with the letter A. Audio, okay, here we are. So here's audio belt which as I said is uh, a value I can record for carrier type, but it's not an element. So there's no link available. As you can see, none of those are available here, but if we go back to looking at um, an actual RDA element, there's a hyperlink, I can just click on it and it takes me to the element page. So as you can see, this is a Nomen element. So if I wanted to go to the Nomen page, I could just click on this to get there. Now, there's another way that I can get to RDA content. If I have set up bookmarks and notes and documents in my profile, let me show you a few bookmarks and notes I've set up here. So this is a bookmark I've done. Um, if I click on it, it will take me to that specific instruction where I've bookmarked it. And I'll just show you the note book. Um, here it is. And if I click on it, the note that I created for myself will pop up. So again, I just wrote myself this little note um, to help me remember about, you know, 
what I can do with pseudonyms. I'm not going to explain to you how to create bookmarks and notes because there's already a, vi a video available about how to do that. So it's called uh, the linking tool video and it's in the toolkit channel. And basically when you highlight an area, you can see this linking tool pops up and you can create a bookmark, a note, get the URL or get a citation number. Then the last way I'm gonna talk about navigating to toolkit is if you've created a document for yourself. So this is just a little sample document I started working on just to show you some things. So don't actually like read anything in here. Um, it's just for you know explanatory purposes. So I can make some uh, URIs to look to in the toolkit. So if I wanna go to this element page, I can click on there. Assuming I've set up these links correctly in my workflow, if I just click on it, it'll open up the capitalization page and here I am. That's all I have to say today about navigating in the RDA toolkit. Thank you for watching. Um, by the way, I think my dog might have barked a couple of times during this video. Sorry about that. I'm working at home and this is the best we can do um, in these times. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.